Now that we've created a basic search page, we also need to create somewhat of a layout using columns and rows so our search page can function across the iPhone, the iPad, and various Android devices and tablets. So let's look at how we do that. Open up your search page, and let's go ahead and add something below all of our navigation bar extras. So what we're gonna add first is a column. Open and close our curly braces. And of course we have to give this an ID. So let's call this, well we don't have to, but in this case we're going to, content col. Now we need to position this column inside of the page. And we're gonna do it slightly differently to how we've done it before, but we're still gonna use the anchors. And when you hit enter, it'll give you an autocomplete and tell you what you can choose. So anchors dot, and there are loads of ways of positioning things, but we're gonna say left. And this is going to position it to the left of the screen, as you might guess. And we're gonna say, I want you to look at the parent, and I want you to align that anchor to the left of the parent. And then I want you to anchor the top of this. And where's that gonna to anchor to? Well, the parent dot top. Okay, so you may be asking, well, won't this interfere with the navigation bar? Well, no, it won't actually, because, well, for a start, this isn't the nav bar. It's just the stuff we've added to the existing nav bar. But this column is listening to its parent. Its parent is, of course, page. Page is embedded in the navigation. So that's why those two things won't interfere because column only knows about page, page only knows about the nav bar, and so they won't override each other in terms of position. Now we're gonna have anchors dot right, so we can align the right hand side as the parent dot right. Are we gonna put a bottom on it? Well, no, we're not actually. We're just gonna let this column run and see if scrolling solves that problem for us, which I suspect it will. So we've got our, our positions, left, right, and top. Now what do we need? Well, we need some margins because we don't want our text to go right to the edge of the device. It's a bit of a usability no-no. So let's set anchors.margins. And what margins are we gonna choose? Well, we could define it here. We could say 15 device pixels. Remember that we uh, sorted that out earlier, what a device pixel was. Instead, what we're gonna do is go back to property cross main page. And remember, I created this read-only property that I told you I'd come back to called content padding, which is gonna take the device pixels of the default bar item padding. Now, if you wanna know what that is, all you have to do is right click it, follow symbol under cursor, and it takes you to the file, the class, the QML class in this case, which is theme navigation bar.qml, and shows you what that value is. So in this case, it's 15 device pixels. So it's kind of arbitrary. You know, we could just write 15 here ourselves if we wanted to, or put it in a config file, which is the better solution. But we'll just go with what we've got now. So let's go back to our search page, and we're going to use, sorry, let me get that content padding as our margins, content padding. And you'll notice it picks up that property from its uh, second level parent up, content padding. And then we're going to have some spacing, which again will be content padding. Now let's create a row inside of that column. So a column is pretty obvious what it is, and then we're gonna have a row. I'm gonna give this row some spacing, because everything and everyone needs space occasionally, which will also be content padding. So now we can save this, we can run it in our live viewer, and hopefully we see no errors, and we also see nothing. But don't worry, we'll get on to filling out these rows and columns as we progress through the app. For now, it's enough that we don't have any errors.